Hello. Welcome out there to anyone who's joining. My name is Danielle Gaudet, and thank you for coming today for another Conscious Conversation here at Earth Management TV. You're welcome to say hello in the chat box anytime if you like, where you're calling in from. Oh, hello. Hello, <laughs> William. Should I call you William or should I call you Cody? Please let me know. <clears throat> it's good to see you. Thank you for coming. Okay, great. So today's topic is self-love, which I think is a very important topic. Hello, Patricia. And one that I believe not only me, but most people are really wanting in their life more. So first, let me talk about that in relationship to earth management. I think this is kind of you know, the most obvious of all my conscious conversations may perhaps, you know, there's, there's songs, right? Old songs, what the world needs now is love. We know that what we need in our world for our planet is more love. It hurts us to see the way humanity hurts each other. I think it hurts us to see the way that humanity hurts the earth. And I think it even hurts us to see the way humanity hurts themselves. Hi, Blueberry. Welcome. Thank you all for coming. So I think we can all agree about that. So, you know, when we talk about energy, love is also an energy. And it's like, you know, wanting to increase the energy of love on this planet. Welcome, Anika. Thank you for coming. We're, we're, we're many of us, so many, not just the few of us here on Earth Management TV, obviously. There are so many people all around the world who are wanting to see an increase of the loving energy on the planet and a decrease of the hate on the planet, the rage, the, the fear you know, the all the anger. This energy creates huge amounts of turmoil, conflict, violence, chaos. Whereas we know the energy of love naturally breeds peace. It breeds joy. I think love and peace and joy and even gratitude, they come together. It comes with a light and a warmth and a sense of well-being, love, love itself. Loving something is wanting to care for it, take care of it, not hurt it, right? So we don't want to hurt the people we love. We don't want to hurt anything we love, you know, whether that's our, our pet or our plants, our garden, when we feel love, then we cannot feel the desire to hurt at the same time. If we lose the feeling of love inside and we slip into our fear, our anger, our frustrations, our own personal rage, then conflict arises in our lives. We can even unintentionally hurt others. It, it happens. So conflict arises in our relationships or, you know, this is how we see conflict arising in a family unit who loves each other. But sometimes we slip out of that place of love. And, you know, we have many other layers inside covering our love. So this is, you know, a separate topic, but this is why emotional management is so important for this very thing. Emotional management is important so that more love can be freed up in our hearts to flow out to the world. So how are we going to increase love in the world? Again, I'm always talking here in these conscious conversations about the importance of the individual, the power of every single one human being. The way that we increase the energy of love on the planet so that all the hurting and the hating 
energy can decrease because you can't have both at 100%. Stronger energy always wins. So when we see a lot of violence happening, then we know anger and hatred and fear energy is winning. So if we raise up the loving energy, it will naturally decrease. This is an energy principle. You cannot have both at 100%. So if the power of love increases, this energy of anger and hate and violence has to decrease. So who, who can raise up that energy? It's human beings. This is why it's not an understatement that every single one of us is so important. And how we live our lives, not only, again, I'm always talking about this here, not only the actions that we're doing, because of course, kind actions are very important. Loving actions, very important. We want to see more loving actions in the world, right? So, but that begins with the love in my own heart. Me as an individual, if I'm full of anger and frustration, even if I'm full of anxiety or if I'm deeply exhausted, it's very hard to feel love, right? Can you agree? Well, even when we're just depleted and our, our energy is low, we're much more prone to negativity, to criticism, and it's really hard to let our love flow. So the, the critical point here is me, my own heart, my own inner world. Am I existing in a space of love? And when I lose it, can I get myself back there? So today's topic, self-love, this is the key. This is the key. If I form a new habit, so it's all about habits, because whatever negative things we've done in our past or whatever conflict that we, you know, have found ourselves in or even maybe find ourselves in now, this is also from habitual behavior, habitual ways of reacting and responding to life, habitual ways of treating myself first, and therefore that's reflected to how I treat others. So we can bring this in, in, in to a very, very micro level, self-love. Am I loving myself first? If, if I'm able to do that, when I'm able to do that, even if it's just for a moment, I'm generating the energy of love inside of me. And naturally, just through my existence, even if it's just one moment, that energy of love is expanding out into the world. When you know energy, when you realize this, we're all living in this very interconnected energy field, this life force, then you can see how connected we are. You know this just in your own personal experiences, right? If you meet a friend or a loved one, you come home, whoever it may be, and let's say they're very angry. And then it's really hard for you to keep a loving, positive vibration because you feel that anger. So you could have been in a really good mood, but now you're feeling something negative and you're struggling with that. It's like two different energies. And the stronger energy wins. So sometimes our loving self is soft and the anger is overpowers. But the, po the opposite is also true, right? So sometimes if somebody is in a little bit in a bad mood, feeling down, feeling low, and then somebody comes they, or they interact in some, some reason, some way with someone who's very loving, that love can touch them and change their mood entirely. It can help us release, you know, if we were feeling negative, if we were feeling down, we were feeling off, just love, feeling loved, being loved, being around someone loving, having a loving exchange can totally shift our energy in a positive way. This is how impactful we are. 
Hello, welcome, Kay Nose. I'm not sure your name, but this feels great to hear and to change since I live in a stressful environment. So environment's not easy. It's not easy. And it's not easy to change our environment. And it's not easy to change our world. It's, it's, we can feel so powerless. But it's possible to change myself. It's very possible and it's very within my own power, my own hands, to change my relationship with myself. And this is why I really want us to take a serious look at this, this term self-love, which I feel like is so common. We hear it so often and we know we need to love ourselves more and self-love is important. It can almost get watered down. It can almost get a little like distant from us. Like it's too big, maybe too, too vague or too popularized, too much of a cliche. Yes, bumping into others' energy, negative energy is very hard. Okay, thank you all for your comment. And I see Blueberry too saying that you've had these moments. So self-love, I, I worry it can become too much of a cliche like that. Just mm, like numb, I can become numb to it. Yeah, self-love, right, right. Yeah, the self-love exercise, self-love class. Okay, self-love journal, self-love book about self-love. And then we can become a little bit um, desensitized, right? But right now, Today, what I want us to do is really take a very sincere and honest look at your own relationship with yourself. How much are you really loving yourself inside? How much are you feeling the feeling of love towards your own self first, which will naturally emanate to those around you? So it's something that we need to check because as you're saying, you know, we can get really distracted by others. That person's being really negative. Oh, that person's anger is really bothering me. Oh, I just heard about this thing on the news. Why are those people doing that? Oh, those people need to stop. And we become, you know, what I'm always talking about here again, focus outward, outward, outward. But then we lose our love. Now I'm annoyed. Now I'm angry. Now I'm criticizing. I'm blaming. And then I've completely lost my feeling of love. If I check in with my heart, my heart maybe feels just blocked or a little numb. I don't, I can't sense my heart. Or maybe I just feel a little like agitated, annoyed, like grumbling to myself. This happens very fast. It's a delicate system. This energy of your heart. The heart is very sensitive. It's very fragile. We need to treat it kindly. So the same way you would treat someone who you loved, we need to practice treating myself that way. And this is like vitamins for my heart. This is like nurturing and nourishing my own heart of love. Like if my heart was a, a plant or a flower, that is giving it sunlight and water and feeding it with good nourishment. Really being careful and cautious and paying attention. First of all, how am I talking inside my mind? This is the first thing to check. How am I talking inside my mind? Am I complaining all the time? Maybe not to others. But even if I'm just complaining in my mind, oh, I hate it when that person does that. Oh, why is this like this? Oh, why are people doing that? It's my heart that hears me. So from that moment, my love is shrinking and my annoyance is growing. My negativity, my frustration, my anger. We have to be really honest with ourselves. I want us to take like a hard look at this. In my personal experience with my own self-love, which let's just say loving, loving myself, loving relationship with myself. I feel like I have felt that the most important thing is to be really honest and take a really hard look. Because yes, self-love becomes cliche. We get numb to it. And we also just get numb to our daily habits. We don't even notice what we're doing. 
we lose sight of it. We're busy and the world is busy and noisy and we're distracted and we don't even realize how we're talking inside, how we're mumbling and grumbling or maybe complaining. What is my inner talk, my inner voice? Every time I'm annoyed at what, someone on the road driving, I look at social media and I'm like, frustrated. I'm judging. I don't like what these people are saying on the news. I get upset. How's my heart? How's my heart? We're treating our heart kind of in a negative way at that moment. Like we wouldn't even want to treat our pet that way or even like our plants, <laughs> especially at Earth Management TV, people who really love the earth don't even, wouldn't treat, you know, a tree like that, wouldn't treat our garden like that. So we have to start to think of my heart as this living, breathing energy. You can think of it like a flower or a plant, it's a, or, or even a being, it, you know? We have to care for ourselves. Be, be more kind in the way we talk to ourselves. First of all, clean up the way we are talking inside our mind. And sometimes that's judging myself and sometimes that's judging others, but actually it's the same thing when it comes down to how my heart responds. It affects my own heart in the same way, actually. And so it's not only about Oh, I can put myself down, but I'm kind to others. Or I'm kind to myself, but, you know, others need to change. This affects our heart in the same way. Let me pause for a minute and read some of these. Okay, some of you can relate to this. It's hard to manage energy when stressed. I agree. It's resonates. Sometimes I allow others to affect my love. Like you said, I need to feed myself and not get distracted by others. Yes. Correct. I feel that these conscious shifts, changes of thoughts and love has something. It brings a lightness, I think you're saying, Blueberry. It feels uh, bright, more bright. Okay, I'm glad you feel on point, Patricia. So I don't want anyone to hear this and then further judge yourself like, oh my God, I was talking this way. I shouldn't. I'm bad in some way. No, this is just self-check time. We need that check-in time. We just need it. Um, I think Blueberry is saying like to raise awareness, become more conscious. You know, here on the channel, we're talking a lot about eco-consciousness and be having a more earth-conscious lifestyle, which begins with raising awareness. And this is also what we need to do with my own inner world. Am I being more, more conscious of myself? So am I being critical of myself and others? Am I talking negatively about myself and others? Am I being unaccepting, unforgiving of myself or others in some way? It's hard because I, Amy said, it's hard because I feel so aware of how I feel and think, but others around me don't have that awareness. I know. <laughs> so we cannot change others. I cannot say it enough. I cannot say it. I cannot say it too many times. We want to. We feel if you would just change, be aware, stop saying that, stop doing that, I could be happy. But if we live like that, then we are powerless. We're powerless to make a positive change. And what I want to say is I want to put the power back in our hands. We're not powerless. So regardless of the outside world and others, we have a power to practice how we're going to respond. Like how we react and how we respond to that is up to us. So that's why it's about making a really like hard determination. And I'm going to, I'm going to be talking more about choice in a future conscious conversation, but it's really a lot about choice, making a very hard, like all of us need to right now and again later today and again tomorrow morning when you wake up and again and again and again, keep making a very strong choice. 
I want to be loving to myself. I need to protect my own heart. I need to choose more kind ways of talking to myself and others because that also hurts my heart. I need to just choose to practice more patience with myself, more compassion. We've talked about this here on the channel, more empathy and compassion for myself and others. So the more you try to do it for yourself, naturally it will leak out to others. But why I keep bringing up others is because sometimes we can think, no, I'm good, but you, you need to change. But when you look at that in terms of the energy field, that hurts my heart just as much. That's like unloving to myself. Being mad at somebody else, blaming somebody else is, is hurts me, hurts me. Again, all the things I'm talking about are very interconnected here. I've talked also a lot about forgiveness, did a whole webinar on it. And forgiveness is not anything to do with others. It's releasing that toxic energy for being more loving to myself. So even if we want to, I kind of want to say, like, forget about others and just focus on your relationship to yourself. However, unfortunately, it's very interconnected. So you have to be aware when you are angry, when you are blaming, criticizing, frustrated, so tired of somebody, how does that make my heart feel? So perhaps this is a good exercise to start today. How does this make my heart feel when I talk like this, when I get mad at this person? And how can I breathe more love into my heart? What do I need to do for myself? Okay, I see some comments. Okay, Cody, there's a part of me in my brain that I cannot get to calm down some days. I could sit there all day smiling and relaxing and it will just not stop. <laughs> yes. I understand. I understand all your feelings. And I also understand what you just said, Cody. We're, we're also working with complex inner worlds, right? So I know that this topic is not as simple and easy, you know, that I could, you know, I can just, I'm just sharing about some important principle that can be useful in this short period of time I have. But we are very complex and our brains are complex. And some of us may have experienced trauma and that causes us to have developed a lot of unhealthy habits with the way we treat ourselves, the way we see ourselves, the way we relate to ourselves, others, and the world. This is true. And this is also something that we have to work on just lovingly. So even what I would say to Cody is, okay, but imagine if you knew someone who also had that problem, same problem. And someone, it's someone that you love very much. What would you say to them? What would you say to comfort them, to console them? Maybe you would say, it's okay. It's okay, I get it. I have that too. This is compassion. This is empathy to myself. So it doesn't mean I have to be perfect and have a perfect day every day because this is not reality. But when I have imperfect days, moments, when I'm stuck, stuck in negativity, when my mind is racing with anger, what can I do? What can I do as a loving act towards myself? Maybe that's just telling myself, it's okay. Tomorrow will be better. Or maybe it's like, maybe I should go for a walk, get some fresh air, just breathe a little. Maybe I just need to, you know, take some time for myself today. Maybe if I'm around people, I'm probably going to be like grouchy and grumpy, negative. That's probably going to make me feel worse. Let me go. Walk by the river, walk in the forest, do some breathing, do some energy exercises, go for a jog, whatever it is eat this kind of food? Like, what can I do for myself to be more loving to myself, even when I'm stuck in a negative space? Even there, if I decided I want to be loving to myself, each day, you don't know what's going to arise from inside. You don't know what's going to trigger you. You never know. I never know. 
But how I respond to that, how I deal with that, I can still respond in a loving way. Okay, Blueberry, in daily life, it's often changed from anger to humor. Even this little change affects the situation. <laughs> okay, so yes, okay, Blueberry, that you bring up a good point, humor. So this is where we can use social media in a positive way. You just Google search some, you know, comedian or something that makes you laugh. That's a positive, loving way to take care of yourself. What, what can we do that's loving to myself? Sometimes we need to sit down and breathe and be with myself and sink in and feel and feel. And other times we need to just call a friend and have a lighthearted conversation or watch a funny movie or go, you know, dancing, bike riding, something that makes you happy. Cultivating a loving relationship with yourself. And I know that, Cody, you said you're imaginationally challenged. So, but you have people in your life. So you have to observe when someone in my life who I love, okay, or, or a person or a plant or a pet or anything that I love, how do I treat it? How do I treat it when I want to show my love to it? We need to practice turning all that big love that all of us have for others onto myself. I believe every single one of you have huge love for others. In the heat of that moment, you don't, you're not paying attention. I get that. You're just in the moment with your friend, with your partner, with your child, with your parent. You're just love with your spouse, with your pet. You're just loving. You're just enjoying the moment. I get that. But I want to ask you, if you're stuck, if you don't know how I can love myself more, observe. Try to observe yourself in those moments. And then pause for a minute and ask, can I turn this love on to myself too? Why do I have to be in the dark? And just giving love to them. Why do I have to just wait for love from them? Why can't I give it to myself? What can I do? So that's kind of today's sort of homework for all of you, to take a really hard and honest look at yourself, how you talk inside your mind. Is it negative? Is it positive? Does it make you feel more loving? Or does it make you feel more frustrated, angry? And then asking, what is something loving I can do for myself? In my experience, many times the body, the heart responds. It gives me an answer. Other times I have to pay attention. Wow, I was really loving to that person. How can I turn that love on to myself? And if you have no idea what to do at all, what I want to recommend, this is an exercise I love to give to my students when they're really struggling with self-love. I think this is a great exercise, simple. Look in the mirror. Okay, so this can be every morning when you wake up or every night when you're getting ready for bed or any time throughout the day when you go to the bathroom, you wash your hands. You have many times where you're in front of a mirror. It's not have to be extra work for you. There's many times where you're standing in front of a mirror. Just look into your own eyes in the mirror deeply. The way you would look at someone who you're really trying to listen to them. You're really trying to understand them. You're feeling sorry for them. You want to feel them. You want to hear them. You want to let them know you're there for them. The way you would look at someone like that, I want you to look into your own eyes. Just stand there. Look into your own eyes. Breathe. Feel your body. And say, as you look into your own eyes, I love you. Say it over and over, at least three times, I would say three to five times, and really feel your body. Some of you might feel, no, I don't, I can't. And then you know, mm, this is my starting point. This is my current loving relationship with myself. Others might feel, oh, it's awkward, it's uncomfortable, I don't know. Okay, that's what you have to work with. You need to open that blockage. It's something that needs to be released there between you 
and your loving relationship with yourself. So I really recommend you just try it. And I am certain it will help you discover something, awaken something inside. Either, oh, I need to breathe and relax and let love into me more. Or you can feel, wow, this is a really good check-in moment. Now I feel like a love injection and I'm ready to go out, go out of this bathroom and re-engage. It, it will be a powerful experience when you do it sincerely with feeling, with the feeling. Look into your own eyes. And then this is how we bring love into the world. I know it sounds so small, like really just saying I love you to myself in the mirror. This brings positive changes to yourself, your health and well-being of your heart. And this naturally through our interconnectedness of energy and consciousness, we, create, we start to create a brighter ripple, more positive ripple. But we don't have to do it for that. And we don't have to be upset with ourselves when we couldn't do that. We just... Do it for me because I've decided enough is enough. I was hard on myself enough in this life. I've hated myself enough in this life. I've judged myself, compared myself, criticized myself enough, blamed myself enough in this life. I would like to start loving myself from now. And you just start again. And you start again later today. And you start again tomorrow when you wake up. And you start again tomorrow and the next week and the next month. But when, once you make a decision, now it's begun. And there will be a change. There will be a transformation of love inside your heart. And I am certain that will have a positive impact around you and for this world. So let me see. Patricia says, I am learning to show myself grace now. If I can give others grace, why not give it to myself? 100% agree. This is exactly my point here. Thank you for saying that. Okay, Blueberry, thank you. Small things that make a difference in this world, Patricia. Yes, exactly. So this can be seen as a very, very small thing, but this can also be seen as a very, very huge thing. Just know it's so important. It's important for your mental, emotional health. It's important for your physical health. It's important for your spiritual health. It's important for your relationship health with others, your family health your community, organization, workplace health, and it's important for the health of this planet and humanity. You're welcome for the reminder, Amy. Yes, those of you who have ever practiced with me before have probably heard me say that, but we, we can all remember again and start again. Anytime we forget, we can do it again. And then each time you will see you are evolving you are changing, you are transforming, your love is growing. I really want you to see that and feel that. I want you to receive the benefit of that. You deserve that. You deserve the love in your heart for yourself to be fulfilled with that love. I think that will, that's the beginning of making our world a better place. So I hope you will try it and see how it goes for you practice and feel free to let me know how it went. And I will continue more conscious conversations that can help support these concepts going forward. Okay, thank you all so much for coming today. So nice to be here with you. I am sending love out to you and wishing you the best in your self-love process. Okay, take care. Thank you. See you next time. See you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.